Einen schönen guten Abend zusammen. Wir haben zwar noch nicht ganz 10 Uhr, so jugendschutztechnisch und so, aber auf Ihrem Aufkleber hier auf dem Laptop steht so schön drauf, It's just porn, Mom. So, if it's just porn. Okay, ich rede in Deutsch weiter. Wenn es nur Porno ist, äh, was ist es dann nicht? Sex. Ähm, ja, sie wird, jetzt, äh, wird euch jetzt ein bisschen was dazu erzählen. Herzlich willkommen. And um, yeah, for the benefit of those of you uh, who don't speak German, I'll switch to English. <laughs> uh, welcome to Pornography and Technology, a Love Affair. I will start my talk um, but with an overview <laughs> of um, the history of media up until the birth of modern pornography. Then I will tell you something about the definition of pornography, how it has been defined before and how it actually can't really be defined and how I would define it. And then in the third part I will tell you something about modern pornography, teledildonics and interactive porn. <laughs> All right, let's start. As long as mankind is able to use paint, and sculpture uh, and has the ability to abstract. There has been sexually explicit imagery. Um, the depictions of sexual organs of phallic objects um, have been connected with religious rights and fertility rights. And the jump between um, the depictions of sexually explicit imagery to be at, in, in a religious context, and um, pornography made to the sole purpose of arousal was made between that time and the written word. There are actually a few requirements for pornography to exist at all. At all. One is um, the ability to abstract. Um, the ability to abstract had to be great enough to recognize words and later pictures and audiovisual input as potentially arousing. And also the emergence of mass media helped to distribute pornography to the people. The cheaper it became to print or take pictures or film, the cheaper the pornography became. And that rendered it affordable to the masses. For example, printing. Uh, Gutenberg's printing press uh, printed the first pages in the 15th century. And erotic literature was printed shortly thereafter. And um, This made it possible to distribute uh, written pornography widely for the first time. Uh, of course, it was still illegal to own it, and people were prosecuted and incarcerated uh, for owning and distributing anything. Um, but it was in, in Europe, it was different than in Asia, for example, where pornography in words and pictures have a much longer and richer tradition. But um, the 16th century saw the first pornographic engravings, Uh, they emerged in Italy. They were called Il Modi. There were 16 explicit sexual positions, um, much like the Kama Sutra, maybe. And since there were engravings, they were um, very expensive to copy largely. And because of censorship, all original copies have been destroyed. Um, but those pictures were not only... Uh, made to arouse the viewer, there were also a kind of social commentary on the situation in Catholic Italy. In 19, uh, no, in 1839, I'm sorry, um, Daguerre, which is this gentleman over here, he presented his first photo photographs, and they were called daguerreotypes, and they were produced with metal and later glass plates, which were coated with light-sensitive chemicals, Who were then, uh, which were then exposed to light and developed right on the spot of the photograph. The materials that were used were very heavy and the process of exposing took up to 15 minutes. This made portraiture very um, challenging because the models had to keep very still for a very long time. So action shots were not possible. And um, the realism of photography made authorities uneasy 
And so naked women or pictures of naked women were only released and licensed as painters' aid. So only painters could uh, use them to paint from the pictures. But um, most of those uh, pictures licensed as painters' aid were actually quite pornographic with girls showing their genitals into the camera, for example. And um, the only way to reproduce daguerreotypes was to photograph them again. Um, because the coded plates didn't allow for any form of reproduction. And this made the pictures rare and um, the exposed original plates almost priceless because, as you can see on this picture, the coating could easily be scratched or destroyed or the plates could break. <clears throat> uh, stereoscopy was invented in the mid-19th century and it was a popular technology that used uh, two daguerreotypes and this wooden handheld device to conjure up seemingly three-dimensional pictures. And it was very in vogue um, as, a, as a technical plaything. And of course, the function was very popular for pornography because the, the rigid poses the models had to, um, yeah, um, I just lost, um, I'm just lost. Um, all right, yeah. The um, stereoscopy made the poses seem more plastic and real, and the authenticity uh, conveyed with that technology was granted. In 1841, this charming gentleman, um, William Fox Talbot, he patented the first negative positive process, making photographs easy to be reproduced, and thus for the first time available to the masses. And also the exposure time shrank and um, making other types of poses and action shots possible. Another thing that added to the um, international distribution of pornographic pictures and pamphlets was um, the postal service in the 19th century, uh, who, uh, which for the first time became more reliable, faster and internationally safe to use. Porn dealers could send out their erotic pamphlets and pictures in plain wrapping to the customers, which is uh, still done today, actually. <laughs> uh, shortly after, William Dixon, a Scottish employee of Thomas Edison, invented a motion picture camera. And he also invented the machine you see over there, which is the kinetoscope. It's a slot machine to view short reels of moving images. It was made for penny arcades and fun fairs, and um, the machines were designed for one person who could um, watch those short reels and um, hear a soundtrack uh, with headphones. And um, the films were mostly boxing, dog fighting, but also of erotic nature. And um, even after the introduction of movie projectors, which enabled a crowd to watch the same feature at the same time, um, early film was not an attraction standing on its own. It was shown as the end act of variety shows when the people were already leaving the venue, or it was an attraction uh, used in wandering circuses or fun fairs. The reels were very short, only six to ten minutes fit on one reel, and they had to be bought because there was no effective rental system in existence. So the people who showed those films had to buy them and had maybe four or five films in stock, showed them until nobody showed up and then moved to the next town where they began to show them again. Um, the first erotic film appears at the end of last century. No, the beginning of last century. And there are a couple of films um, <laughs> um, being credited with being the first. But it, was, it, it couldn't be established if the porn of French, Argentinian, or German origin was the first. Most early film uh, didn't survive either the time or the censors. And the others are archived in the Kinsey Institute of Sex Research in America. Mm. Yeah. In Europe, there were a couple of film pioneers, like Oscar Mesta, for example. He, was, uh, he invented several ways of combining sound with films in early movie theaters. But he also, interestingly, signed responsible for the first German erotic films. There were films of women stripping and bathing around 1902. 
um, that was quite innocent because Germany uh, quickly became known for the rougher, more fetish-oriented type of porn reel. The first films, uh, the first erotic films in Italy s surfaced around 1911, and of course France became soon notorious for its pornography, which was uh, quickly copied and exported all over Europe and to the United States. The first audience for erotic and pornographic film were men, of course, in closed societies. Um, they often were put under social pressures to enjoy whatever was shown them, um, so they had the pleasure to watch um, everything that was on the market at that time, which could be heterosexual intercourse, women bathing, or even sodomy. And those films were called stag films. And... Um, they were privately shown, and the entry fees to the spectacles, uh, to a spectacle like this, was so high that only well-to-do men could afford to watch them. Early pornography was also shown in whorehouses, where customers were supposed to be um, enticed by those films to buy sexual favors of the attending ladies afterwards. Stag films didn't have a plot or narrative because of the limited length. Um, and because of the sensation of seeing an undressed female engaging in sexual acts was really overwhelming and enough at that time. Mm, the films were often better produced than written, meaning that the people making them knew more about um, filmmaking than the nature of pornography. This led researchers to the assumption that um, the people producing pornography um, in the early years were actually professional film producers from Hollywood making money on the side. And uh, whereas normal movies quickly developed into more sophisticated forms, they had sound and titles became more elaborate and credits were introduced and all of that. At the same time, the pornographic film had few titles, no sound, pictures were out of focus, the camera position was static, and credits were omitted altogether. So it was an anonymous uh, thing. Um, all this changed when the sexual act banned on film ceased to be a sensation in itself, and narrative elements had to be introduced into porn to avoid repetition and visual ennui. Porn tried to embrace important elements of popular culture and sexualize them. For example, in the first two decades of last century, uh, cars became for the first time affordable to many people and were consequently used in pornography as a symbol of freedom and mobility. Uh, women also often played an active part in the films of this era. Um, for example, in the, in the film A Free Ride from 1915, two female hitchhikers get picked up by a man in a cabrio and they drive into the woods where the man gets out to urinate. And the girls are curious and spy on him and uh, become aroused and uh, urinate themselves as a result. And, <laughs> and uh, this time the man watches them and the girls, um, they see him and they practically jump him and sexual action ensues. So... Um, Many aspects of, of popular and mass culture were thus put into, into a pornographic context. The 30s, on the other hand, um, where women in real life went into factories because their men had to go to war, uh, saw women in porn passive and submissive, and they were gagged and bound, and they were completely bored by, by anything that went around them. Uh, by that time, sound had been introduced into pornographic films, which added a whole new dimension because dialogue was used to create more complex plots and also to take back some of the effects conveyed by the pictures. I don't know why you're laughing. <laughs> there are plots in pornography, I tell you. <laughs> because those narratives uh, they even brought moral and ideology into porn. And when I say moral and culture, 
I mean a reference to the culture of the day and to the morals of the day. Um, it has, pornography has since then always been more than sex and on film because um, it can tell us something about our world, our society and about our cultural taboos. In 1968, Denmark was the first state to legalize pornography. In consequence, uh, Scandinavian hardcore pornography became widely available. And this coined the misleading term Sweden porno for any film produced in Scandinavia. This is one of uh, Lasse Brown's films. Um, he was actually Italian, I think, but um, <laughs> produced pornography in Sweden and um, smuggled it out of the country using his father's uh, diplomatic status. That was... <laughs> Um, 1969 saw the first sex expo, the Sex 69, where many sex tourists from neighboring European states attended because in other states, pornography wasn't legalized then. 1970, finally, was the year of the first modern pornographic film. It was called Mona the Virgin Nymph and is even listed in IMDb in the Internet Movie Database. It was feature length and plot-based and, of course, produced in Sweden. <laughs> and at that time, porn desperately wanted to go mainstream because um, they, the porn producers dreamed of a merger between Hollywood films and pornography. Um, that included feature length, uh, higher budgets, putting a focus on narrative and plot, also um, paying more attention to technical professionality. And uh, Deep Throat, which you probably all know, and Behind the Green Door are two examples of early modern porn. In the second part of this lecture, I would like um, to direct your attention to the very, very difficult question of defining pornography. Um, since the beginnings of erotic literature and pictures, there have been attempts to define pornography and to define what, what is obscene and what is perverse, for example. Philosophers and lawyers and academics and anti-porn feminists and pro-porn feminists, and they all try to define what pornography is, and they all came out with very different results. And there is a quote I would like to paraphrase for you that sums up the problem best. It was um, uttered by Justice Potter Stewart in a, in a court case being made to ban, ban a potentially obscene film. And he said, I don't know what pornography is, but I know it when I see it. <laughs> and everyone trying to define pornography uses different criteria and a different status quo. For example, the only common criteria academics could agree on was that pornography seeks to arouse its consumer. But what is arousing and, and for whom? I mean, images that are perverse and shocking to you um, could be a big turn-on for me. Uh, in the words of Ruby Rich, <laughs> if I like it, it's erotic, but if you like it, it's pornographic. <laughs> Um, for me, uh, pornography has to fulfill certain technical criteria. Of course, there's, in this topic, there is nothing like a black and white definition of such a fleeting thing. Um, there are gray areas, and you will think of a thousand counterexamples to every example I will give you. But the following is just an attempt to bring the whole confusing thing into some sort of order. So um, the first point for me is pornography is media bound, meaning without a medium, pornography can't exist. It's all about the degree of abstraction that is needed to read the text of pornographic imagery, and that is very vital to its existence. Without the medium to further pornography's distance to real life and sex, it ceases to be pornography. For example, I would argue that a porno you can find on the internet is indeed pornography. But a performance where two or more people are fucking on stage, that's not porn, that's sex, because the layer of abstraction is removed. The second point I would make is 
pornography is fictional, imaginative, and iconic. Because pornographic films are staged. They're choreographed, lighted, edited, their credits, and sometimes even titles. Um, the films are dubbed when they arrive in Germany, and sometimes there's even a soundtrack. All of this adds to the abstraction and the artificiality of audiovisual porn, even when there are non-narrative sequences. Um, a gray area here, of course, is the field of amateur or privately filmed porn. Um, and the, the, the border between pornography and documented sex is uh, thinnest in this genre. Um, finally, the third point I would make is uh, pornography is produced for an audience. Imagine for a moment that um, my best friend had an orgy recently. He documented on film. So the first criteria, pornography is media bound is fulfilled. He cut out the parts where they had to sort out all their respective limbs. He even lighted the scene and added the end credits of all the participants. Um, <laughs> that would fulfill criteria number two. But he didn't show the video to anyone except the participants and some friends who know all the participants. So since everyone with access to the video is either a protagonist or a close friend, the position of a disinterested audience is not given. The degree of abstraction is thus lessened because all the people involved, because I as a viewer, I know all the people involved, and I, ca I have no chance to devise any sort of fiction from the scene because I know their real names, I know what their jobs are, and uh, this makes it really unsexy, probably. Um, <laughs> As soon as the footage is released, say, on the internet, and has an audience to whom this orgy is a part of fiction, um, it fulfills all three criteria and becomes pornography. Um, Audiovisual pornography is definitely a product devised for mass marketing and profit, and it can be assumed that there is pornography for every existing fetish, and there is no fetish that doesn't exist. Um, it is artificial, I think, but not planned to be art. But however, in public discourse with an informed audience or with analysts, it can become art. At least that's what I think. <laughs> mm. After the first modern pornos, there quickly came the development of home entertainment systems. And <laughs> Uh, this eventually led to the format war between VHS and Betamax in the 70s. And there is a very popular urban legend that states that uh, VHS won because of pornography. Um, of course, the reality is multi-layered, and there's more than one reason that played into the success of VHS and the failure of Betamax. VHS won because um, the length of the tape. That's the main reason, because VHS tapes ran for two and a half hours and Betamax tapes ran only for one hour. Customers wanted to tape TV shows or features and they were often longer than one hour. Um, also, porn producers began, began shooting their footage on videotape. Um, they wanted to lower the production costs and as a result, porn moved out of cinemas and was put on VHS tapes because at that time, porn wanted to go mainstream and had feature-length film. Um, it, as it went into people's private homes, um, the customers were able to watch pornographic films in the privacy of their homes, and they didn't have to endure the humiliating act of entering a smut cinema anymore. And, um, yeah, that's why VHS practically became the medium du jour for, for pornography. Right. And the birth of the, and development of the internet um, saw a rapid rise of uh, new and revolutionary pornographic distribution models and practices. I won't tell you from the beginning because you're all experts there, I assume. <laughs> I will just give you some statistics. Uh, in a recent uh, statistic um, quoted on, on Heisen News, which is a German um, technology news service. Um, it was established that 60% uh, traffic of peer-to-peer -peer networks is pornography. On the other hand, um, 
a recent uh, 2006 statistics which used a random website sample from Google says that only about 1% of those websites um, were, had sexual content. Mm, I would like to give you some example of a new kind of pornography, which is um, interactive pornography. What you see here is um, a screenshot from um, Second Life, which is a computer game. And um, in, that, in that game, avatars can be programmed to have virtual sex. And um, whenever they meet, you can have uh, virtual uh, relationships. And there's even one guy. He's the guy who makes uh, all, he, he's the guy who makes slash dong dot org, which is in the lower le lower right corner. And he used um, a modded force feedback uh, console joypad to translate the stimulations from the video game into real life um, vibrations. <laughs> And also, what I found uh, today, actually, on Flashbot, was the <laughs> vibrator. <laughs> you can um, program the V remote uh, to to uh, send out signals to. Uh, to a Bluetooth receiver, which then sends those signals to a USB device, like a USB vibrator. And so if you shake the remote up and down, uh, the vibrator moves. And <laughs> there... <laughs> As you can see, pornography has become, or interactive sex has become so versatile and fleeting that it's hard to make trend prognosis. There are a lot of things like this, and they're, even, they're coming even more. And um, there is a clear preference for interactive elements. Uh, this, I think, is just a plaything. But uh, in future, I think the abstraction of... Um, Playthings like this will grow further apart from the wish for authenticity and, and real compassion in sexual relationships. There is one last thing I like to say. That is, uh, pornography is not bad, and so you can really uh, admit if you see it. Um, but please, next time you watch a pornographic film, try to spend some thoughts about what it tells you about the world and you. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? Um, yeah, do you think, think so that uh, pornography may be or may have been uh, um, a driving force in the development of technology, for example, in sending uh, pictures over mobile phones and uh, things like that? I'm sorry, I don't understand a word you're saying. Um, it's, it's not you, it's just uh, the loudspeakers. I can't really hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, do, do you think that pornography may be or may have been a driving force in the development of technology? Um, yes and no. Because, um, well, it's very hard to find hard facts on um, technological developments and pornography. It's a lot, there's a lot of urban legends and speculation. For example, I think it's clear, to, it's, it's safe to say that we wouldn't have broadband internet without pornography. Because um, there were, uh, first there were scanned pictures of nudie magazines in, in uh, news groups, and after that um, 
films and cam girls and streaming and all of that needed more bandwidth. And I think that was one of the main factors because sex sells, right? So uh, kind of a comment actually. I was, uh, I was talking to one of the sysadmins of a really gigantic porn site and uh, he was telling me that the security problems they have are a little different than anyone else. Apparently, they had a problem where all of a sudden no one was buying subscriptions anymore. And they traced it back that, um, well, there was a piece of spyware. What this spyware would do is it had in its EULA, check out this advance, in their EULA they said, we reserve the right to deem certain sites as unsafe and we will route your transaction to a site we consider safe. So what the spyware was doing is it would hijack your attempt to buy a subscription to one porn site, give the money to someone else, and make you think you were actually accessing the first porn site. <laughs> so um, it's an entirely different world out there. And I think, through the, wasn't it true that the, through the late 90s, most traffic on the net, like most hosting providers, got like all their money from porn? Um, there are no numbers. So I can't tell you for sure. I would like I would like to see the definition which you which you just. Uh, I'm a little bit obsessive uh, <laughs> dealing with computers, <laughs> and uh, it seemed to me that any feature movie can be pornography by your definitions. And I just thought that maybe you should just add uh, word sex. <laughs> if you can just. <laughs> If you can just um, show us again the definition of pornography, which you... Maybe I just uh, missed that. Um, yeah. If you don't know what pornography is, I think that we need just a little word. Yeah, thanks. Hello? I'm here. Hello? Over here. Left side. Left side. Um, do you know if there are, are there really some big effects of the becoming of pornography which becomes more popular and the sexual behavior of people? Like is there, are there surveys comparing sexual behavior 50 years ago and today and are there connections between pornography and, and this behavior? Well, it depends on the pornography, of course. Um, uh, if you watch, uh, for example, mainstream pornography with... Um, I mean, those people, who they're like trained athletes, yeah? They, they insert something of the size of a bowling ball into themselves, and you can't do that at home without having trained that. And so... Mm, I should assume that things like that... Um, they um, add to the, the abstraction of pornography and are not repeated in the bedroom. But of course, um, as the, um, it's, not, it's not horrible anymore to have a certain kind of fetish because everyone knows everyone has one. So, and the pornography reflects that. There is um, much more diverse kinds of, of pornography and much more different kinds of pornography now than, say, in the 20s. And um, I think that's the kind of connection you're looking for, because it's not, pervert, it's not perverted anymore to have some kind of preference for feet or glasses or, yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, not children! <laughs> no, not that. So just to add, do you see any bad influence on becoming porn more popular? Uh, hmm? Again here. Do you see any bad influence of uh, the popularization of pornography? Well, there are studies to uh, pretty much any result. Um, but I have read a study that um, the higher the, the 
uh, the porn rate goes up, the more people who watch porn, the less rape there is in a state. I mean, there are studies that show the exact opposite, of course, so you can't really say it. It depends on who does the study. Um, the most... No, more like, um, for example, the most numbers I found on the internet about porn on the internet, how much there is, was um, coming from those people who do those uh, protect our children from all the smut on the net. And they have studies. I mean, they have lots of studies. They have lots of numbers. And those numbers are conjured up from thin air. I could never... Uh, find the original study and they just uh, pretended um, to have them. I mean, they were just invented. Um, question. So you, uh, you argue that porn needs to be fictional, it needs to be produced for an audience, but you know, Paris Hilton kind of had a video get out and um, did that become porn like only after the video got out? I mean, did you retroactively go back in time and suddenly they were producing a porn flick? Because that thing was certainly sold to porn shops. Like, does porn really need to be fictional or produced for an audience? Uh, like I said before, um, for, every ex for every example, there's a counterexample. But I think porn is fictional, and it has to be fictional to be um, arousing. And there's, because it becomes fiction when you cut it and edit it and light it. Then it becomes a fiction. Because when I film the sex I have with my boyfriend, uh, it's not fictional, it's real. Because I don't add anything to it. Right? And so pornography um, made for profit, I think that's fictional, always. Even with amateur porn. I mean, then you have, I have, I have a film... Um, that shows two guys sitting on a sofa talking about how bored they are and somehow suddenly there's a naked woman popping up out of thin air and fucking them. And <laughs> that's pretty fictional. Just a comment there. On the other hand, some people may find... Um, audiovisuals of actual sex to be arousing as well. I mean, like with the Paris Hilton, for example, uh, voyeurism, etc. Um, well, of course, sex is arousing too, but on a <laughs> completely different level. I mean, you have, um, you have the touch, you have the smell, um, you have the taste, and when we watch pornography, we only receive it, I mean, we only see it with the coldest of our senses, our eyes. And um, I think, therefore, it has to be something more than filmed sex, because if it is only filmed sex, then there's something missing uh, to, be, to, to make it arousing. I may agree, nice. but some others may not. Um, like I said, there are, there are areas where the borders are very thin and um, it's very hard to define what, what it all is and what it is not. Yeah. And, um, but I think uh, you have to make a stop somewhere. Absolutely, have, very interesting. You anyway. have to make a cut somewhere. Yeah, thank you. I wanted to know um, how big is your collection and uh, do you, can you recommend some titles? <laughs> All right, if there are no more questions, I would... Um... <laughs> I would like to cut this short here because the PowerPoint karaoke people have to set up, but if you're interested, um, I'm here. Come talk to me. Talk, right?